Hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my brand new playlist and in this playlist we are going to create a full stack clone Uber Eats clone okay you might have already uh, already have seen Swiggy clone on my YouTube channel now this is the time to build another full stack clone with all different type of technologies which I have covered on my YouTube channel we are going to talk about all latest technology trends in this uh, full stack clone application i mean we are not going to make all the features of uber eats obviously we cannot but we will try to cover as much feature as we can because it's all about practice here we are creating microservices allowing them to communicate synchronously asynchronously we are writing a front end client in react exploring all the features and here we can also think about the product design like let's say because this is a product which is already available and very much popular in the market now we are trying to create a clone so what kind of architecture we should adopt what all different components this whole product is going to have what all technology stack we should choose and what all different features at least we can cover in the uber eats clone like okay the the user management profile creation notification alert payments uh, for customers like the end users they should be able to log in uh, they should be able to order time order the food or schedule the the food push notification secure payment options these all are actually some core features which should be available in any food ordering app you can consider this as a any food ordering app not specific to Uber Eats. Okay. Why, first of all, why I wanted to build this kind of a side project? Because when I build this, we will use all the different features of Nest.js and Node.js API development. We will create the APIs either in the REST and GraphQL. We will build the, the front end in the React or Next.js with a server side rendered app. So we are going to use all the latest technology stack. We can use the Prisma, which I'm recently covering, right? And then we will just talk about the customer side of the, the web app or the restaurant side of the web app because it's a food ordering. So restaurant will have their own console. Uh, the customers and customer will have their own console. So it's going to be big. And what I'm planning is uh, the technology stack should be the latest. Here we are going to talk about the order management, user management, feedbacks, managing the orders and deals and all about, it's all about data. Okay. So we are going to build a Uber Eats kind of a food ordering app, which will have a, a new simple, which will allow users to quickly log in, select the food for from the restaurant, uh, add them to the cart and just order, right? This kind of platform. And we are going to have a lot of different kind of integration with the services we are going to write in the backend so we will try to provide a minimum set of features okay you can search the restaurant you can order the restaurant you can check out the items and you can order them so all these kind of uh, real-time integrations we are going to do if we talk about the technical side of it technology side of it then i can consider that we are going to use a lot of different tools outside from what the services we are going to do like geolocation, uh, SendGrid, uh, SES, SNS, uh, Strapi, sorry Stripe for the payments, Twilio or push notification, pusher for the push notification and we are going to also, we can also think of using AWS as a cloud for deploying our application because in the past I was just using Heroku and all these things. Okay. So our application, the objective of this whole playlist is to make developers more familiar about the product design when it comes to food ordering app. Okay, what should be the schema? What all different services you can think out of it? How the, the login system should work? Either should you adopt a separate auth zero service like authentication authorization service or you should build some kind of a service by yourself. Uh, do you need an API gateway because you are going to create uh, multiple microservices? Uh, are we going to create an API gateway or should we use AWS one? So we are going to write a multiple microservices, how they are going to communicate one another, right? Like let's say we are going to use all these services, search service, checkout service, ordering service, product service, delivery service, and all these services are going to have their own database. But how the data sharing will happen at the end? Are we going to use the Kafka for the messaging like uh, 
event driven communication between services that can happen through SN uh, that can happen through SQS or some kind of a uh, queuing service like RabbitMQ. We can use Kafka for the event driven messages or reactive events where one service will raise an event. Okay, user ordered, right? User has ordered a particular food item. Then another service will pick up that particular event and will assign the delivery guy for that particular event right so we can think about the event driven design here also some kind of aws knowledge we can also get because whatever i know i will try to put this like load balancers we will not be having the kubernetes i think but the basic load balancers ecs or ec2 instance will deploy there we can use the rds and all these services so what is the, the overall objective first of all understanding the exploring the architecture options understanding the requirements and the features which we can build by ourselves based on the knowledge we have like the front-end tool stack tool stack and the back-end tool stack in the node.js designing the components the technology stack erd uh, entity relationship diagram that is most important thing to build a product uh, to make it scalable I mean we have to choose the right schema and then the api spec for whatever the services we are writing we have to design our local stack using docker compose because we are going to initialize multiple microservices auth microservice um, uh, delivery microservice checkout microservice card service all these services we will expose the rest interface and we will also create a proxy gateway so that a single point of contact should be there for the the front end client either it is a next yes client or the react client and then we will just write the front end client in the react i mean i i want to keep the the front end part minimal minimal means we are not going to have a sketchy or eye catching ui we can build whatever we can achieve using just a simple cart like logic which we have done in the swiggy clone also some kind of thing we can use the tailwind and all these utilities libraries to build the ui and it's all about the integration we are going to have and what all technology what all other tools and technologies we can add that is important part here like okay the payment system integration that is very important the the communications between the different services we are going to use the deployment part of these services once we are done right so those are actually the the learning outcome for the the developers who are watching this whole playlist we are going to talk about the nestgs microservices we can also use the GraphQL. So it's all about, okay, how we can expose an interface either REST or GraphQL. What are different database? We have Postgres, MySQL, MongoDB. We can choose a different database for different services, okay? The user service using the, the Postgres, another service can also use the MongoDB NoSQL database. And we already, uh, on my channel, I'm already covering all these latest technology stack so we can adopt that and we can build this whole clone application so our first thing first is we will just decide what all features we can cover uh, and we are not targeting mobile app we are targeting the web web app uh, at the customer end we can adopt we can just think about the three different systems admin portal the uh, and the portal for the restaurants and portal for the end users like the customers who are buying the food online okay so stay tuned i'm going to cover a lot of things this architecture diagram can change we can uh, adopt totally different things so all these things we can we will explore how we go first we will start uh, doing the local setup of the basic services which we can which, which we can think of and then we'll keep adding the services and the tool set for our development okay stay tuned guys this is going to be the long playlist and i'm thinking that at least I should be able to provide the enough knowledge so that uh, the individual developers can think about the product design.